Morning crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now this is day two of the repairs on Sarah's 1999 GSXR 750. And I thought first job I'll tackle the indicator flash rate. Now Sarah fitted some LED indicators to the back of the bike oh, just before it was shipped. And uh, unfortunately in New Zealand the flash rate has to be between 1 and 2 hertz. That's one flash per second up to two flashes per second. And unfortunately, because it's got LED um, lamps in the circuit now, the current draw is a lot less, and of course the relay then flashes a lot faster. Uh, and there are a few other videos on my channel about uh, wiring up different kinds of flasher relays, and I'll, I'll keep exploring that and doing different videos as I come across different examples because there's lots of different ways of wiring up flasher relays and there's lots of different styles of flasher relays out there. So, you know, before you start a job like this you always do a little bit of research and um, very, very nice chap, Chris uh, at Suzuki uh, New Zealand was very helpful and sent me the entire PDF workshop manual for this bike based on its VIN number. So I knew that the manual I was getting was absolutely perfect. It was exactly the one for that bike. Mm. Chris basically does, um, he's a, he provides service support to all the Suzuki dealers uh, around New Zealand. Right, now we've got here the extract of the wiring diagram for that bike. And you can see if I can try and now just make it a bit smaller for you. You can see here the flasher relay and it says just two wires, and in the manual it says it's located up by the headstock, very close to where we fitted the new uh, steering head bearings in a previous video. And I went across the bike, it's not there. There is no relay in that position. So I sort of delved a little bit further, and I found a relay uh, by the fuse box, and I, I had a sneaky suspicion that was the flasher relay, but it was quite complicated. Uh, I'll go and get it and show you what I mean. <clears throat> so this is the flasher relay, or this is the relay I thought was a flasher relay on the bike, and that's the part number there. Look, it's a, a Denso relay made in Japan, and the part number is 0665004230. A bit hard to, to see on there, I think. Oh, you might just get it now, look. There you go. And it turns out this isn't just a flasher relay, it also has the internals for the, the safety switch that works on the side stand. So basically the side stand's down, the bike's in gear, ain't going to start. So it's like a combination kind of thing, a bit odd, I've not really come across that before. So obviously the wiring diagram is different to this bike. Now, okay, it came from Canada, so maybe there's some differences over there. So... I googled that Denso part number and it came up with you know, aftermarket listings for those relays and the same relay was listed on a Suzuki Bergman amongst quite a few other Suzuki vehicles that mint. I'll see if I can download a service manual for a Bergman and that might be giving me some more information and I was running out of time but the first search I did I managed to get a full PDF service manual for a Suzuki Bergman 400 I think it was, and that gave me, after a little bit of pursuant, a diagram here look, and we've got all the side stand stuff going on here with these pins, and then we've got just the flasher relay, two wires, and that, that's the information I wanted, I wanted to know basically uh, which wires it, were, it was that, that, that activated the flasher relay, and then going back to the first diagram, I'm hoping that the two colour codes, one is uh, light blue and one is a dark green, those are the two wires that we need, uh, basically, that, that, that runs through the flasher relay part of that combination relay. You following me so far? Because it's getting a bit complicated. Okay, uh, the reason why I did this video is because it's complicated and there's a lot of these bikes out there and a lot of people fit LED indicators, this most likely is going to be very helpful to some people out there and that's what these videos are all about. They're about helping people and get out of trouble, you know, and fix stuff and make things work again because electrics are a bit complicated and, and quite often people get a bit bogged down. Even mechanics do struggle quite a bit with electrics. It's not a normal thing for most mechanics. They tend to shy away from it. So 
on that diagram there, we've got seven pins. All right, four at the top, three at the bottom. And on this relay, we've got seven pins. Now, the problem I've got is I have no idea which pin is which. Okay, D and E. All right, so on there, look. D and E are the pins for the flasher relay. All right, so now we can work out, if we go back to the plug on the bike that this plugs into, we can work out which wires go on to pins D and E. Hopefully, if it matches the bike's wiring, at least the wiring colours, it's going to be light blue and dark green. <sighs> okay, so we're not going to be able to use the, re the flasher relay part of this relay anymore because it, it, you know, it, it flashes too fast. So, Jeremy down at Cycle Treads, very, very helpful chap. If you, if you live in Auckland and you need parts for your motorcycle, uh, aftermarket especially, he's brilliant at sourcing stuff that you need. So go in, see Jeremy, tell him I sent you. And if you're elsewhere in the world, unfortunately you don't have access to a Jeremy. Okay, um, so he sourced me a relay from Kiwi X. Now I've used one of these before on a previous bike with full success. And uh, this is, they call it a QX 3-pin LED indicator relay. What that means basically is it's an electronic relay. The internals are electronic as opposed to the old mechanical type that has, um, you know, an armature and a winding and a bimetal strip. And we've covered that in previous videos, so I won't explain how it works. But the basically, the electronic relays, um, the flash rate is not determined by the current flow. There you go, in a summary. So, inside here, you get, obviously, a relay. There's the relay, and that's what it says on the top there, look, if you want to have a little read. Okay, and it doesn't actually label the pins, which is a, a bit of an issue. And you also get, basically, a headlight, you know, one of those halogen headlight, uh, well, basically a headlight plug, a three-pin plug. You find these on cars, motorcycles, all sorts of stuff, pretty standard. And you also get, fortunately, a wiring diagram. The wiring diagrams basically are like the Bible, aren't they? We need that to work out what's going on. So, very quickly, there you go. So we've got the three pins here, look. We've got uh, E, earth, that goes down to ground. We've got L, which is the lamp side, that goes off to the lamps. And then we've got B here, look, um, which basically is the live feed in. Now, on this diagram, they've got the power from the battery going straight to the relay. On that bike, that's not the case, I don't think. Let's have a little look. It is. It goes to the relay first and then goes down to the switch. That's fine. Everything should work out just fine. Um, okay, let's go over to the bike and let's try and identify those two wires. Um, and then we're going to have to pull them out of the back of the plug and, uh, and then wire them up. We'll just do a test wire first directly to the relay and see if we can get those, those lights to flash. But before we do that, I'll show you how fast the lights are flashing at the moment. Here we go. Right, so that relay that I just showed you on camera, the original Suzuki relay, lives here next to the fuse box. And that was clipped onto the inside of the fairing. Okay, everything's falling apart, it's all a bit loose. Right, ignition on. And uh, I'll put it onto left-hand indicator. There you go. So that's too fast for a flasher reel, for a, an indicator to flash here in New Zealand. Probably get away with it on a warrant because they're, they're not particularly. Yeah, they're a bit slack over here to be fair on the warrants. But for compliance, that's definitely a no-no. The guy will definitely ping that. Something else I want to, be, to look at as well is that's giving off a white light. So we're going to need to put in there an amber bulb. They have to give amber here in New Zealand. Okay, so there's your flash rate, and you can count that if you want, you can time it, and I'm pretty confident that's flashing faster than 2 hertz. Okay, so we'll turn the ignition off. I'm going to remove that relay again, and we'll just go and work out which of these two pins are the pins that we're interested in, and then we can transpose that across to the plug. Back to the bench. Right, so just going back to that diagram again. Here we go, look. So we're looking for pins D 
and E. And they're the bottom two on the th row of three, and E is the end where there isn't one next to it. So it's pretty easy to find. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I think if I am correct, and I'm not always correct, so you've got to tell me off if I'm not correct. I think we should be looking at that pin, where he is, there he is, that one, and that one, I reckon. Okay, that makes sense. So we'll just put a little line up the side as well, because I'm a dead hand getting it all wrong. Okay, right, over to the bike. Let's see what those two pins connect to in, in the socket, basically, that's, that's wired to the loom. There's the relay. It fits in like that. So I'm going to show you this on there, look. That way around. Okay, so it looks like trail bikes. Looks like it's going to be that pin and that pin. Okay, cool. So one of those should be permanent live, well, so ignition live, and one should be the wire that then goes off to the switch gear to then direct the current flow to either side of the bike uh, bike's indicators. Right, better mark those two. Okay, so it's going to be either that one or that one. Um, but we're interested in both wires. We're going to have to pull both of those wires out. Uh, but we'll test them first, I think. Okay, <clears throat> let's get the earth, the earth rigged up. Stick it on there, I reckon that's a good place, if you can see that. Pop it in there so it's not hanging. Okay, meter on. You guys see that all right? Oh, you can, perfect. Uh, range should be 12 volts, there we are, look, that should work. Right, ignition on. Ah, hang on a minute. Maybe, maybe we'll get power, I don't know. Yes, there we go, look, okay, cool. All right, so we've got power on there. That's our battery feed in. Now the bike's currently on charge, that's why we've got 14 volts because the battery is getting a bit low. Okay, so that's third one down is our power, which looks like that green wire, and that tallies, that's a dark green wire. And then the other one, the middle one of that row, is the light blue, perfect. Okay, so those two are the wires that we're interested in, uh, that are gonna run our, that need to be fed to that new flasher relay. So we've gotta pop those out of there now. Uh, and then basically connect to the new relay. But we'll just wire it up temporarily because this is all proof of concept for now. It could all go tragically wrong. Okay, ignition's off. And we've got a little tiny watchman screwdriver here just to try and ping out these two, these two connectors. I don't really want to be chopping the wires if I can help it. So we'll just wedge that down there and hopefully it's going to push in the little tine that's in, in there. And there we go, that's one. Okay, that's our, our light blue wire out. Excellent. And hopefully this, this power feed isn't used for anything else. It doesn't look like it is on the diagram, so we shouldn't be immobilizing anything else. Oh, nearly. Let's try that. There we go. Right. And we've now got our dark green wire. So that's the, the power to that new relay. And that's the wire that goes off to the switch gear on the handlebars uh, to dis you know to be diverted off to left or right on the indicator circuit. Okay, now now that they're out, we can plug this relay back in. Obviously, the flashy part's not going to not going to do anything anymore, which is just fine. We don't need it to. So we'll pop that back in there. That should be able to stay in there now, and we'll wire up that new flashy relay. Okay, so looking back at the Kiwi X flashy relay diagram, we've got B, which obviously stands for battery, goes to 12 volts feed in. So that's going to need to be connected to that dark green wire. Now, when I put this plug on, all the little labels under there are all hidden. So I'm just going to write the letters on the side of the relay, just so that I can't make any mistakes, because I don't want to fry this relay. They're actually quite expensive. So we've got uh, E on that side. And then we've got the L terminal there. And then lastly, uh, hang on, E, L, and then we've got the B, 
which is going to be the green wire. Okay, so we've labelled them all up, going around the side. Makes it nice and easy, doesn't it? It's all about being as easy as possible. Right, we'll, we'll stick that plug on now, and that should be able to stay on forever. There we go. Right, so now we can use some little jumper leads and connect all this up and see, see if we've made it any better. Okay, now we're going to need to steal our little earth. We don't need the meter anymore. So earth is, that's earth, E. So we'll stick that on there. That's our ground. Now, grey wire is L. That goes to the lights via the switch. And B was battery, so let's plumb up the battery first. So we'll use a red lead for that, because that's that's ignition live. So we'll make sure that doesn't touch ground anywhere. And that wants to go onto that wire. And then output to the lights. I'm running out of colours, we'll use green, that will go onto there. Okay, well, can you see the flasher? I don't know. You can, right, let's turn the ignition on. If it starts to smoke, then all the magic comes out and we have problems. Right, indicator on. Oh, look at that. Fantastic, does the other side work? It does. Well, I call that a win. That's a perfect flash rate, to be honest. Cancel. Done. Okay, does the bike still start? Let's find out. There's the proof of the pudding. Oh, yeah. Excellent stuff. Okay, so all that's left to do now then, basically, is tidy up all this wiring, because she can't ride it around with all the test leads on there, can she? Wow, it just goes to show that with a little bit of luck and a fair bit of research and a bit of, you know, testing, um, you can get there, can't you? It's not hard, but there's quite a few pieces of this jigsaw puzzle to get to the point where these indicators worked using the aftermarket relay and the problems with the wiring diagram, not, not matching the bike and, and all that kind of stuff. But hey, it can be done. And fortunately, this time around, wasn't too bad. Probably took me, I don't know, maybe half an hour or so of searching and working bits and pieces out, um, which obviously I did before the video. Preparation is what it's all about, isn't it? Okay, so all I need to do is tidy up the wiring, so I'll, I'll get the little blowtorch out and some solder and some heat shrink, and we'll get it all soldered up. Okay, let's do the live one first. So that's those two wires, get rid of the jumper. So that's the black wire off that plug onto there. So we need to cut off that little connector. Don't need that anymore. Goodbye connector. We'll just bear that back. Yeah. Cool. And is it gone? There we are. We need some heat shrink down there, don't we? So we'll put that on now. Before we forget. Because I do forget. Must be getting old. Right, and we'll just twist those two wires together, do it nice and easy. Okay. Hopefully the fuel tank's not going to blow up. I'll let you know if it does. That's one. Right, so we'll just double it back on itself. I find that's about the strongest way of doing these things. And you only need two hands, which is great. Okay, a bit, of, a bit more heat for that. Cool. Well, that's one. 
Okay, what next? Let's do this one. So this one is the output of the flasher relay to the switch on the handlebars. Distribution switch, we could call that, couldn't we? There we go. Right, more heat shrink. Now this one's a longer wire, so we'll chuck it down. Chuck it down this one. Get it out of the way. It's a lot colder today. It was a nice day yesterday, but it was a bit, a bit chilly. It was raining last night, I think. Yeah. I think tall girl Sarah's coming down today, so we might see her in one or two of these videos again. Okay, last one. Now this is the ground wire. Now we don't actually have a ground, so I'm going to have to basically make up a wire, extend this, so that it goes down to ground. So I'll do that. I'll work out a good place to put it somewhere out of the way. It needs to be on the main frame of the bike. Obviously you never ground anything after the headstock, because it, otherwise it runs through the bearing and the bearings, and that's not a, a proper ground. Okay, so I'll do that. Oh, there's a good, there's a good little bracket there, look, sir. I'll find a bit of wire and we'll extend it. Easy. Okay, let's just put that down there. A bit of extra wire. I've done it in black because black's traditionally a ground on these things. So the next guy that works on this doesn't get too confused. There we go. Should be able to solve that up now. You've got to make sure it's cool before you slide the the um, heat shrink down. Otherwise, it can actually shrink as you're sliding it. Just never a good idea. There we go. Right. So all that's done now. This will attach to the fairing, and I'll I'll find a way of just zip tying this new relay close to it. So. As regards the length of wire that we need for the ground, just thread that through there, look. There we go. It's going to sit around about there, and there's the ground I'm going to use, so that should be about enough, I reckon. So we'll just snip that and pull it back out. Maybe give it a little bit extra. There we go. Pull it back out, and I need to find an eyelet that's got a 6mm hole in it. And we'll crimp that on there. I might even have a solder one. I'll have a look. Back in a second. Nope, unfortunately not. All I have is the crimp type, and I've only got a red one. So maybe I can't double it over. But hey, it's a budget job. You use what you've got, don't you? Okay, so it's a bit long, so we'll trim that down. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. Pop that in there. Get the crimpers. Choose the red one. Stick it on. Give it a crush. Kick it off. Bob's your uncle. Okay, so I've got a bolt to undo. Stick this on. And then we can do a final test. Ch 
Jeez, that was tight. It is Joy. She's captive. It's got a lot going on with this bolt at the moment. It's a radiator support bracket by the looks of it. Hopefully the radiator is not going to fall out when I take it out. It does go straight on the frame, which is a good, nice, good earth for it. About that, actually. Yes. Okay, one new wire. Thread that down there. There is a little zip tie, a, a cable tie right next to it, a genuine Suzuki one. So we'll try and just feed that through that as well. Just have a go at feeding that through there. Use that original tie. And now we can just pop the bolt straight through, can't we? Hopefully things haven't moved too much. Yep, somebody's here. Okay, done. Final check. Right, mission on. Right indicator. Oh yes. Left indicator. Perfect. Oh, some more RAV4 bits have just gone up the drive. Excellent. Okay, so there you go. It's done. Not a bad job. Didn't take long once we knew what wires to use. But hopefully I showed you a little bit of the process of how to work it out. And research really is a fundamental part of doing this kind of stuff. Especially if the wiring diagram you've been given isn't the right one. But hey, such is life. Okay crew, well if you found this video helpful, why not click on the subscribe button. And uh, our friend, if you tick notifications, our friends at YouTube um, will send you an email as and when I upload any new videos. You'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google Plus and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. We also have a new Patreon page. So if you want to look a bit, a bit more about behind the scenes of the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel, uh, historic stuff and what's coming up in the future, drop onto there and of course you can donate as well if you like. Become a patron. Okay crew, well hopefully tour girl uh, Sarah should be here soon and she'll be joining me on the next video, fingers crossed. Alright crew, cheers, over and out. Hey tour girl Sam, how are I'm you? Back. You're back! It's Fantastic! So I know, and I've got a new shirt so I thought it's only right that I give you a new shirt too. So. There you go. I'm so excited for my new shirt. And I don't have to wear different shirts every day. And as a classic Tall Girl Sam move, I am going to wear it like this. Wow, well, would you look at that? I'd say. That is a great present for your girlfriend. If she's into tools. If she's not, she's probably into tools because you're a tool. See what I did there? Tool girl shirt. Perfect. <laughs>